I'm here with my friend, Dr. Jackson Crawford, and today we're going to talk about metamorphic rock and the different kinds of rocks. I'm Luke. Luke. You're telling me there's different kinds of rocks? <laughs> there are, believe it or not. I'm Luke, this is Jackson, this is Polymathy. What are the three kinds of rocks? I don't know if you've heard of them uh, or, or what you might know about geology, but that's what we're going to talk about now. I was a big dinosaur kid. Mm -hmm. I mean, I know some of the basics about this stuff, right? I mean, sedimentary, igneous, and metamorphic rocks. Okay, those are the three types. So sedimentary, um, pick one. Um, say igneous. What's igneous rock? Uh, originating in volcanic activity. That's right, yeah. And uh, so uh, we have two basic kinds, um, like I talked about in the Ringing Rocks uh, video from a, a few months ago, different kinds of um, uh, igneous rocks. There's two basic types. Uh, volcanic and plutonic, which are named after you know, Vulcan and, and Pluto, respectively. Pluto or you know Hades down inside the Earth. That's where, because um, you can, where you know the difference between lava and magma. Usually, the definition is that magma is um, liquid or, uh, in fact, some kind of plastically moving. Usually, plastic is used because under such high pressure that it's you know more like toothpaste and is like a, a liquid. Lava on the surface. Um, and uh, so that's the, the big difference. If it's on the surface or towards the surface or affected mostly by the uh, low pressure and usually low temperature environment of the surface and the high temperature, high uh, pressure environment of the subsurface is plutonic. Um, and uh, that's where kind of rocks come from, if you will. That's how the first rocks form usually when you have um, like the earth and it was molten once and it becomes solidified. But then what happens are sedimentary. So what are sedimentary rocks from there? Uh, formed by, well, I guess I'll say formed by actions of wind and water. Absolutely, yeah. So any kind of uh, erosive process. So if you get, you know, a kind of um, a piece of a beautiful piece of granite, which was a plutonic rock, but here, like here in the Rocky Mountains, it gets uplifted and exposed to the elements, and the pieces of it get uh, disintegrated and turned into it could be sand or just little, you know, it could be boulders, whatever. That, and then you have some kind of detritus and it falls down, gets into river systems or the ocean, and then creates um, things like shales or sandstones. We have a deposit of that sedimentary material, sediment, and it gets through uh, chemical processes through time turned into a rock, a solid piece of thing which has, has minerals in it. And then the one that is ex exceptionally beautiful, including uh, the stuff that I'm looking at behind me, is uh, metamorphic. So what's metamorphic rock? It has changed. It has changed, yeah, with meta, like uh, meta in Greek used as a kind of prefix for, for changed. Um, uh, so the uh, metamorphic, so the, having changed its its shape. So here, let's see if I can see it in the, yeah, like here. Um, and I didn't have not done a very good analysis of these rocks. I just looked at them and I thought that this was, it's, it's exciting for me to see having uh, studied uh, geology uh, years ago, because what you see here are these uh, beds. If, um, and I think this looks like it was some kind of um, deposit and maybe a, a river system or maybe towards a, a beach or something like that. So it's, it's reasonably fine, but not super fine. And they were deposited in beds. So, you know, the way that layers of, of mud can stack on top of each other or of sand. But if seeing these, these waves in here makes me think of two things. One is that the waves could be from dunes, um, that it actually was deposited in wavy uh, sediment uh, like that. But also just looking at the way that there's some crystals that have grown into it, it looks like it might have actually been through lots of high temperature and pressure, maybe deep within the surface of the earth over millions of years, that allowed this rock to get extruded in, in this way. And it got bent and warped because of metamorphic processes, which make a physical, a distinct physical or chemical change in the rock. And that's what uh, metamorphic rocks are. So they could come from metamorphic rocks to be metamorphosed, sedimentary, like I'm seeing here, or they could be igneous, like um, granite that's been metamorphosed would be, you know, could be uh, really beautiful. So that's just a little kind of overview of rocks and a beautiful example of uh, the amazing things you can see here in the, uh, the Rocky Mountains. Also, something else that's really cool that we have right behind us. You see how um, this, uh, we have this, this kind of bit that's outcropped and this outcropped, but then there's this notch here. Do you have uh, an idea? Yeah. What do you think is causing that? Any uh, idea? Well, here's my ignorant speculation. Perhaps this stratum uh, was uh, softer rock. Exactly. 
Okay. Yeah. Oh, that's on the money. That is, that is the answer. Okay. Yeah, that's that's my interpretation. Again, I, I haven't studied this specific area at all. I mean, you can uh, see but this is a di somewhat different color. From exactly. This, so. Different color. Yeah, you, you got, yeah, you're st studying fossils. You learn a lot of this uh, basic uh, kind of uh, kind of geology, so you definitely know know about this too, which is great. Yeah, exactly. Softer rock. So my interpretation is just some kind of um, uh, it was softer. So as it's been exposed here to the elements for who knows how long, this part has been more preferentially eroded by rain and wind, and, uh, and thus is exposed, making all these kinds of um, these beautiful and amazing shapes. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. That was a little little geology intro with uh, Jack's Croft. So, um, uh, Jackson, have, what it there? So, what is uh, what are the uh, have, what it uh, so uh, um, like uh, so uh, what is there? So, 